why do they feel that this is a problem at this point in time? Is there a sudden resurgence of girls being tomboys or dressed in a particular way? Suddenly, statistics show that there's a high number of, you know, girls who are doing this. From the time I was growing up, uh, there's a lot of tomboys around. My family, for example, just to take it on a very personal level, there's six girls in my family and all of us were quite tomboys when we were growing up. There were no boys in the family. So I wonder why there needs, that kind of behaviour needs to be criminalised. I mean, what's the thinking that goes behind the need to say that people who dress in particular ways are, what, what are they? Are they a menace to society? Are they dangerous? For me, this is another form of regulation with regard to how women dress. Yeah, that's basically what it is. Uh, and where do we draw the line? When does uh, dressing up in trousers, for example, um, become tomboy or punkit? So, you know, like, how, how do you define it? If I dress up like this, then will someone think this is tomboy or punky? Or how do we decide? Does the trousers have to be this long? Or is it this long? Does it have to be baggy? Can it tuck in or tuck out? Uh, you know, like just little details like that. And I think when you do this, it, be, it comes to a point where it will become ridiculous, uh, you know, uh, in terms of the enforcement especially. How will, how will they decide it? Um, there were a lot of tomboys in my school then. Um, it's quite normal to have a few people who will be a bit more boyish compared to the rest. And I think for, for us, um, a women's group, a Muslim women's group as well, um, the idea of, of masculinity and uh, femininity, yeah, both things, we feel that um, these are gender, aspects of gender. And aspects of gender is a social process. Some some per people may be dressed in particular ways and then they grow out of it. It may be a phase, but then some people may continue with that. So the, the thing is, like, um, when does it become dangerous when they are dressed? You know, a lot of women now wear trousers to work. There's a more relaxed attitude with regard to how women are dressed, even in the business sector. How do you decide when it becomes forbidden? Uh, what kind of actions do they have to portray in order for them to cross that line. That, for me, would become a very grey area. Uh, and it will depend on the person who implements the law. And when you have a law that is quite vague, uh, then it won't, the application is not going to be the same on everyone. Uh, you know, like, I hit someone on the head, I can be charged. It's quite clear I can be charged for something. But then, if someone gets arrested for dressing like a man and behaving in a manly way, you need to describe exactly what is it a man, how is it a man is supposed to behave and how is it a woman is supposed to behave. Then say exactly what kind of behavior this woman did that is manly and not womanly. Some people are just, you know, a bit more tough compared to others. Uh, so then the law can be quite, how it's applied can be quite, um, uh, uh, can be quite uneven. Yeah? Uh, so while this is at this point in time only a fatwa, if it gets gazetted, it becomes law. Um, then if it becomes law, then that means you need to have enforcement. There will be decisions in terms of what, what is the criteria, the fine, po the fine print that dictates this is manly behaviour, this is womanly behaviour, this is manly clothing, this is womanly clothing. Uh, then it becomes very problematic, yeah, in terms of definitely it's a law that will be really hard to implement if it ever gets gazetted. I think uh, the fatwa is merely restating what has already been the hukum. And uh, as a Muslim, we all know the hukum is um, a woman must adhere to the way a woman should dress and behave. That is really restating what uh, we have already know. It's just that when it's, l it's meant as a fatwa, it becomes stronger. Um, so yes, I, I agree that a woman should not uh, behave in a way that uh, makes uh, the public confused between a man and woman. 
and, and as well as men shouldn't make the public confused between a woman and a man. Um, if he's a man, he's a man. If he's a woman, he's a woman. My understanding about what constitutes a tomboy is, is basically someone who acts, behaves uh, like a boy, meaning her demeanor is such that people might think she's a boy, but she does not necessarily uh, love women because a lesbian would love woman, isn't it, and, and would engage in unnatural sex. Now that is forbidden as well. The fact that there is a difference between tombo being a tomboy and being a lesbian does not negate the fact that being a tomboy is wrong as well. Being a lesbian is wrong and being a tomboy is wrong. If you, but it's just that the degree is greater if you engage in unnatural sex because unnatural sex is already a greater sin um, compared to um, just behaving like a boy. There's nothing wrong in being masculine. Um, I mean, being a, it, it's, it's not like uh, a wearing pants is, is, is wrong. Uh, wearing pants slacks doesn't make you a tomboy. But I think what needs to be clarified is what constitutes menyerupai laki. That's when it's, uh, you know I think the, the, the thing about Islam is that it encourages you to think. You know yourself. It's how you manage that problem. If you have a girl who likes men, but she just doesn't like to dress like a woman, then um, of course it becomes, in, in, in this, from the Islamic viewpoint, it becomes a problem because Number one, if she dresses like a man, she is not covering her aura. Number two, if she dresses like a man, she will also end up acting like one, if she does act like one. So that will cause confusion in society. So what, what needs to be there really is a support system uh, by counsellors, friends, society, I think uh, we have not come to a stage when we just uh, be very open about things and talk about it. Um, why do you dress like a boy? Is it just because you, you, you like dressing like a boy or you do have certain unnatural inclination towards your uh, own sex? Uh, we've, we've not come to a stage where we've been able to openly discuss these issues. I think when we are more open, we can discuss and then we know how to try and help the person control these tendencies. I think um, everything uh, in society is, is, is never perfect, but if we have a proper system and that system is supported well by existing institutions, then we can always try to manage the situation. As a Muslim and as, as a, a person who believes that, um, al I, although I do believe that you should have to a certain extent uh, freedom in making choices in life, but if you have chosen to be Muslim and you are Muslim, then uh, you should understand that uh, there are reasons why um, God has told us it says that you should not engage in an unnatural sex, therefore you do not engage in unnatural sex. Although you may sound feminine, but you are not gay or something like that. You know, you try and, and, and restrain yourself. I think if, if we understand how, uh, how God made society, God made society with so many different kinds of human beings, but God tells us, okay, these are the laws. You try your best. Try your best to follow what has been prescribed. And what we do is we manage the imperfections that we have in the society with the laws, guidance, and regulations which God has granted and given us.